Eti fo ne abeja fo e mamunyina akwa president ana adudan kwa kufu adu odin simbi abetuja this no usual affairs ya mama share the whole address or the ababet uh e sam bro fo ne nsema wo mu no ene se na ne tintini minti no ye pese ye mawo the more just in regards to this message me injured vital part e mawo me no ka say no uh per the nation address and akufo do address our ma just some few minutes ago no looking at things ghana could be heading into a second lockdown i'm not saying we will looking at things there's a possibility if me you and our families back at home in ghana if you don't uh, flout the COVID-19 rules and protocols. Me purchase a say, yes, it will call abundance. So, no smacks. Yes, it will quit. You say use sanitizers. You don't do the necessary, you don't practice social distance and do the necessary things. Ah, you are really to maintain it. Now, a month will be brain. Yeah, then at the end of the day, there's not going to be any lockdown. But if you don't do all of these things and pay what the president is saying, pay what the health officials are now saying, say every blessed day be a Ghana, they recorded 200 new cases. I'm very sorry. We might be going into a lockdown just like what our friends in US and um, UK are in right now. Now, my main boss to to the president address no ML. I could follow the same P, a two job, but uh, first now they a two job is a Ghana, see any your corona virus active cases now. It's not almost 2,000. And I see a death to one move, you know, they are around getting to 400 people have died so far from the novel corona virus. Aside from that, you know, or purchase a Siano every day, be an year recorded 200 new cases. 200 new cases among four are in a critical condition. People are dying, and all parties you see and see that they not quite know. We will say, uh, virus na air banana. One more year, test your mother do na if the airports or move fear man on the air bagana do do na no money. So positive, no. It's not saying to know when we say Ghana for be breed, they are flaunting the coronavirus rules, they are breaking the rules, they are not wearing social, they are not wearing sorry, no smacks and practicing social distance. It's no or be charging IGP. So, all my police for entry crew, yeah, chill now. We share no smacks, sir. We in your MPP and DC, I said, we will deal with you because a law I have passed say you need to wear a no smart so that they are here. No, and today, and all patches say. Anybody who is being caught by the law, so we say no smash. You are not practicing social distancing in church or in cards, workplace or church, you'll be dealt with. Also, our partners is here. The government is still ramping up its test, which means a better test amount for pinya and dad. And also the senior high schools, you know, uh see any ma omunina health centers in case they find any your friend is uh coronavirus uh uh, coronavirus in any of these students near the idea they can be, be uh, they can be able to deal with them aside from that so apart is a very soon Ghana will also be taking the vaccine but let's look at how Akufuado put this particular address now some of the vital issues he said the Ghana is not going to be in some of the or the Etuja Fellow Ghanaians, good evening. Before I start, let me use this opportunity to thank you all and Almighty God for enabling me to swear for the second time the oath of office as President of the Republic. The ceremony took place after I last spoke to you. I promise I'll do my very best to live up to your expectations. I'm coming into your homes tonight with some rather unpleasant news. When I delivered update number 21 some two weeks ago, I urged all of us to continue adhering to the enhanced hygiene and mask wearing protocols that have served us well and which led us to the situation where we were witnessing a gradual decline in the number of active cases. However, since that time, we have seen an upsurge in the number of active cases, from a little over 900 to 1,924. Our COVID-19 treatment centers have gone from having zero patients to now being four because of the upsurge in infections. Particularly worrying is the fact that the Ghana Health Service is recording on the average 200 new cases of COVID infections daily. 
the number of patients requiring hospitalization and intensive care is rising. The number of severe cases, which stood at 18 a week ago, has increased sharply to 120. Two weeks ago, there was no critical case. We now have 33 in our treatment facilities. Again, according to statistics from the Ghana Health Service, the considerable number of persons who are severely ill are surprisingly relatively youthful persons with no previous underlying health conditions. The number of confirmed deaths has increased sadly from 338 persons to 352 within the period. Recent genomic sequencing undertaken by our scientists have established that some arriving passengers tested positive for new variants of COVID-19. These passengers have all been isolated. Furthermore, work is ongoing to determine the presence and extent of spread of the new variants in the general population. Detailed investigations of the cases indicate that apart from arriving passengers at our airport who tested positive, infected persons have, have recent histories of attending parties, weddings, end of year office programs, family get togethers and funerals. At these gatherings, most of them abandoned the use of the masks and were engaged in actions that led to them contracting the virus. Fellow Ghanaians, at this current rate, whereby 13 out of the 16 regions have recorded active cases, our health infrastructure will be overwhelmed if the situation continues. It will severely undermine the efforts government is making to revitalize the economy and put our nation back onto the path of progress and prosperity following the ravages of the pandemic. On 7th January, as I said, I swore to, and I quote, dedicate myself to the service and well-being of the people of the Republic of Ghana and to do right to all manner of persons, unquote. It is my duty to protect lives and livelihoods. In furtherance of this, I've instructed the Inspector General of Police to direct officers, men and women of the police service to ensure the rigorous enforcement of the law on mask wearing at all public places and in public transport. They are also to ensure the closure of all nightclubs, pubs, beach, cinemas and beaches that may be operating in defiance of the law. They will be assisted by the other security agencies if need be. Persons in marketplaces, workplaces, and operators of public transport must conduct their activities in accordance with the hygiene and safety protocols. The wearing of masks in these places is mandatory. Regulatory agencies will undertake random checks to ensure conformity with COVID-19 rules. Should any facility or institution fail to comply with these directives, its activities will be immediately prohibited and appropriate sanctions applied. It is important that I remind all Ghanaians that severe punishments exist on our statute books for persons breaking the law on the mandatory wearing of masks. Should anyone be arrested by the security agencies disregarding this directive, that person will be dealt with strictly in accordance with law. We do not want to go back to the days of partial lockdowns, which had a negative impact on our economy and on our way of life. But should that become necessary, that is, should the number of active cases continue to increase at the current rate, I will have no option but to reimpose these restrictions because it is better to be safe than to be sorry. So together, let us all ensure that we respect the protocols. 
Government is intensifying its strategy of enhanced three Ts, i.e. tracing, testing, and treating to allow us to identify infected persons, isolate them, and treat them. A considerable number of contact tracers are being mobilized to follow up on contacts of all who test positive. All laboratories, public and private, must supply in real time data on all persons tested on the common platform established by the Ghana Health Service. There will be sanctions against laboratories who fail to comply. We've also provided additional logistics, including vehicles, to the Ghana Health Service for the supervision and monitoring of asymptomatic cases being managed from home. Additionally, government is reactivating available treatment and isolation facilities across the country in anticipation of any further increase in infections. The provision of adequate medicines, equipment, and personal protective equipment to enable health workers attend to home-based patients is being affected. Fellow Ghanaians, as our children in kindergarten, primary, junior high school, SHS2 and SHS3 resume school from tomorrow, I wish to reiterate that government has taken the required steps to ensure their safety in school. Heads of institutions as well as their teachers have undergone the requisite orientation on guidelines for school reopening during COVID-19 to enable them assist with compliance of students with the protocols. I've been encouraged by the preparations being made by many schools, in some cases with the support of their old students association and PTAs in anticipation of the return on Monday. On our part, government has also undertaken the fumigation and disinfection of schools and the provision of sanitizers, masks, liquid soaps, Veronica buckets, rolls of tissue paper, face shields for learners and staff with hearing impairments, and gloves for caregivers and attendants to schools across the country. All senior high schools have been mapped to medical facilities across the country so that any outbreak of the disease in any such school can be duly contained. Suspected cases in primary and junior high schools will be managed by district health teams through the school health program and the COVID-19 rapid response teams. The world is facing a learning crisis, a crisis that is further worsening inequalities in access to education, with children from poorer homes and communities being worst hit. This learning crisis has serious implications for the future of our country. This is especially worrying for me because I have placed education at the center of the social and economic progress and prosperity of Ghana and of our political stability. That is why in our attempt to mitigate the impact of the pandemic, the CAP bus initiative being administered by the National Board for Small Scale Industry has started disbursements to applicants from private educational institutions, many of whom have been hard hit by the pandemic. More disbursements to these institutions are being processed. And I wish to speak directly to the students and children returning to school. And those of you who have already returned, I know that for most of you, 2020 was a very unfamiliar year and presented a setback for your preparation for the future. You all saw the struggle your parents, especially working parents, went through with you at home due to school closures. You also know how you struggled to learn from home, even for those of you who were lucky enough to continue with some of your classes online the frustrations, the idleness, the absence of classroom or study group intimacy, 
it has all been extremely difficult for you, your parents, teachers, and everybody involved. This is something we should all try to put behind us. Much of that depends on you. As we take these big steps to go back to school, your attitude, your behavior, your self-discipline will decide whether or not our schools will, re will remain open. I'm pleading with you. Please observe the COVID-19 protocols at all times. You must maintain the level of discipline and sense of responsibility to stop the virus from spreading in your schools and for those students at home as well. Wear your masks at all times. Wash and sanitize your hands regularly. Protect yourself. Protect each other. Protect your teachers. Protect your parents. But please, do not give me a reason to close down schools again. I pledge to do my best to keep your education going. I want you to assure me, your parents, your teachers, and society as a whole, through your actions, that you will do your part as well. Fellow Ghanaians, I urge all of us to continue to live responsibly with the virus, even as we work towards accessing the vaccine. Details of the access and rollout plan will be announced very soon. Let us work constantly on how to do our work, keep our businesses and places of worship open, and send our children to school, all in safety. Government, for its part, is resolved and determined to help ensure that we're able to return to our normal daily routines that is going to work going to school, going to shop, going to the market, going to a funeral, going to the pub, going to the club, going to the cinema, going to the beach, going to the stadium, or going to worship. We can achieve this result if we cooperate and work together. It is essential that we protect ourselves, our families, and our loved ones from the virus. It is a collective responsibility. If we embrace the safety protocols, that is the enhanced hygiene and mask wearing protocols, and we continue to put our faith in Almighty God, who will see the light at the end of this tunnel. Zero active cases, that is the goal. We can and must reach it. And we are known Makese yare enyanko e e ma ne ho subium aba pese oboye nyina ho ban nje si se ayaye e fa yare no ho no ye baba ahwese obi a bedi so pepepe aba ni obi a obeti abra no e bedi pa e fri se ye ni abre e pese ye pam yare e fri asase so nti mesem mu ndi sise no so e titru mu se mas no anya mi me i wi akese hila e e yako e wo ehe e ko am la lo nta o ni ebu mo fia mo he no e wo beji anu to ni wo ke fo si e o ba ko e ni mo fe mo Ketuning pepepe. Am lalo, ke mo fiamo, ni babu mla, ba ye wa. No wo mi panya fai. Ye ke beljano toe, achuni, titri, mask we. Fellow Ghanaians, in all sincerity, I repeat that this too shall pass, for the battle is the Lord's. May God bless us all in our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention, and good night.